Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Ikra Khalid. I am the Member of Parliament in Mississauga, Erin Mills, and really happy to have all of you join us today for what I think is a really, really important moment in, in Canada and in how we are moving forward together as a community. But before I go any further, I'd like to acknowledge that the land that we are gathered on today is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. I also want to let the media know uh, that are joining us uh, that the speakers will be available for a question and answer session following uh, the speaking portion of, uh, of this event. So as you know, we have a very important announcement today that focuses on how we as a country will continue to tackle the unacceptable lived reality of Islamophobia and hate that Muslim communities in our cities and our whole country continue to face. With that, I'd like to introduce a very dear friend of mine, a colleague, Minister Ahmed Hussein, Minister of Housing and Diversity and Inclusion, to make a very special announcement. But before I have you come up here today, I will say that throughout this whole journey, Minister Hussein has been a phenomenal advocate. He has taken in feedback from all of our caucus, all levels of government, and he said to us in October, he said, Ikra, before this is over, before we hit another incident, we are going to make sure that we are moving forward on this combat against Islamophobia and all types of xenophobia within our country. And I'm very, very proud to be his friend and his colleague, really proud of the work that he does and the leadership that he has shown on this file. So without further ado, Minister Hussein, if you can please join us here today. Bonjour tout le monde. Thank you so much, Ikra, for those kind words and the introduction. You know, Ikra um, is a very strong voice in our caucus, and uh, we wouldn't be able to make this announcement today without your input and your support and your advice, as well as, of course, Minister Al Gabran, a number of people uh, who really, uh, along the way, care deeply about this issue and how we got here. I want to really also acknowledge Parliamentary Secretary uh, Yara Sachs, Member of Parliament, as well as uh, other members of Parliament who are on their way, Samir Zubairi, as well as Ali Esasi and Shafkat Ali. We also have Steve, Stephen Brown from the National Council of Canadian Muslims, uh, Brother Omar Farooq from the International Muslim Organization of Toronto. Thank you so much for hosting us. And uh, of course, uh, Mohammed Hashim, uh, Executive Director of the Canadian Race Relations Foundation, and uh, my, uh, my very good friend and, and, and long-time mentor, Imam Abdul Hai Patel, from the Canadian Council of Imams, as well as, of course, Imam Hamid Salimi. Thank you so much for being here, Shabir Ali, I see you as well. Over two years ago, after sunset prayers, and just a, a few steps from here, uh, Muhammad Aslim's uh, feast was outside the mosque door. And he was doing what he, has always, what he had always uh, done in the community, which is look out for others. And he was ensuring uh, folks uh, coming into the mosque were wearing a mask, that they were following the COVID-19 protocols that were in place at that time. He had also prepared some food to give to a Syrian family who had just lost a child, and he was helping them and being there for them during that difficult time. Moments later, Muhammad Aslim was killed. A man who had, who had been really known for his kind and gentle nature, who used to carry candies in his pocket to give to kids as treats, and who volunteered at the local food bank, was taken away from his family and, his, and away from his community. The pain and loss of his life are still felt by members of this community. And my thoughts remain with those closest to him, those who loved him so dearly. Personne ne devrait, ne, ne de, devrait avoir à vivre dans la crainte d'être attaqué pour son apparence, sa religion ou son identité. Et pourtant, comme nous l'avons dû vous à de nombreuses reprises au fil des ans, 
la haine, le racisme, la discrimination et l'islamophobie persistent dans les communautés de ce pays. No one should ever have to live with the fear of being attacked for what they look like, who they worship, or who they are. And yet, as we've seen from time uh, to time and again from uh, all corners of our country, hate, racism, discrimination, and Islamophobia still persist in far too many communities in Canada. And we saw that here, just outside these doors. We saw the real consequences of that Islamophobia. We saw it just last week in a video showing a hijab-wearing student, a student being attacked. We saw it in London with the horrific murders that took the lives of the members of the Afzal family. And we saw it in Quebec City where six people were killed and 19 injured in a terrorist attack at the Centre Culturel Islamique de Quebec. This is unfortunately uh, for too many in Canada, a lived reality. The fear that you'll be attacked as you're waiting for a bus. The fear that you'll have to look over your shoulder when you're praying in a mosque. The fear that your children will have to face the indignity of being insulted for who they are, Muslim Canadians. That is the present day reality that far too many Muslim Canadians face. It shouldn't be this way. And it simply does not have to be this way. We can do something about it. And we know that Canadians have good hearts. When times get tough, we know that Canadians rally together. And when tragedy strikes, we know that Canadians lean on each other. And, uh, and we know that after many, many attacks, Muslim Canadians uh, have been joined by their neighbors, by their friends, and by the wider community to show that hate will not win in our country. That is the Canada we believe in. And that is the Canada that we all fight for. Over the last few years, our government has held numerous consultations with Muslim Canadian leaders from coast to coast to coast. And we've asked them to help continue to provide their perspectives and advice on how to continue to combat Islamophobia. And a key recommendation that the Muslim community, and the leadership provided at the National Summit to Combat Islamophobia on July 2021 was to appoint a special representative, a special representative supported by staff and an office and a budget to combat Islamophobia in Canada. In June of last year, I announced that we had begun the search and the process to search for this special representative. At the time, I said we were looking for a person who would serve as a champion, as an advisor, as an expert, and as a representative to the Canadian government as we take on the fight against Islamophobia and hate. And I can now say to all of you that we have found that person. Today I'm very proud to introduce Canada's first special representative to combat Islamophobia, Amira El Gawabi. <laughs> Amira is a celebrated journalist, a tireless advocate for human rights. She has had an extensive career supporting initiatives to counter, and promote, counter hate and promote inclusion, including as a founding member of the Canadian Anti-Hate Network, and is a past board member at the Silk Road Institute. Amira deeply understands the unique needs and concerns of Muslim Canadians, having previously spent five years promoting the civil liberties of Canadian Muslims at the National Council of Canadian Muslims. As special representative, Amira will continue to consult with Muslim Canadian community members while working to enhance our government's efforts to combat Islamophobia and systemic racism in Canada. She will raise awareness and help celebrate the diverse and intersectional identities of Muslim Canadians from coast to coast to coast. She will work with other national advocates to champion the protection of human rights in Canada, including the freedom of religion. And she will advocate for an advanced, inclusive public policy in Canada. I want to take this really uh, important moment to thank Amira for taking on this really important role. And I look forward to the passion, expertise, advocacy, drive, and dedication that you will bring to this really important role. 
I also want to say that this day would not be possible without the strong advocacy and push and encouragement of so many people in this room and beyond. We are here because you got us here. And I want to thank you for all that you do every single day for Muslim Canadians and for all Canadians. And before I end, I want to speak to those who are watching at home. To the young kid watching this who has been worried about what you're seeing on TV, in your community and in your school, I want you to know that I see you, we see you, and that you matter in this country. To the young hijabi, the young hijab-wearing woman who might feel fear while she works down the street, we will do everything in our power to make sure that we fight for a shared belief in Canada, that we all belong. To all Canadians who know in their hearts, as I do, and that we all do, that our country is a place for everyone of all faiths, backgrounds, and nationalities. This is your fight too. We are better as a country when we stand against hate, racism, and discrimination in all its forms. Together we will honor those tragically lost to acts of violence, hate, and we will remain steadfast in our resolve to build a better, safer, and more inclusive Canada for everyone. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Et maintenant, joignez-vous à moi pour accueillir la première représentante spéciale du Canada pour la lutte contre l'islamophobie, Amira El Gawabi. And now, please join me in welcoming Canada's first special representative to combat Islamophobia, Amira El Gawabi. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much, Minister Hussain, uh, for your encouragement, for your incredible leadership, for getting us to this moment. Bonjour, good morning, assalamu alaikum, distinguished guests, Minister Omar al Gabra, uh, members of Parliament Ikra Khalid, uh, MP Yara Sachs, um, and those who, the MPs who are also on their way, Samir Zaberi, Shafkat Ali, uh, Ali al Aisi, NCCM Stephen Brown, uh, Mohammed Hashim from the CRF, Executive Director, and the IMO President Omar Farouk, and all of you, thank you so much for being here this morning. Um, I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are today gathering on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Chippewas, and most recently the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. En tant que colon, je suis profondément reconnaissant aux Premières Nations, aux Métis et aux Nui d'avoir été les gardiens de ces terres depuis des temps immémoriaux. Canadian Muslim communities are made up of individuals holding a variety of intersecting identities. Whether we immigrated to this land by choice, by displacement, or were born here in subsequent generations, we recognize that by being here as settlers and immigrants, we are bound to the treaties of this land. It is a deep honor very humbling to be standing before you as Canada's first special representative on combating Islamophobia. C'est un grand honneur de me tenir devant vous en tant que première représentante spéciale du Canada pour la lutte contre l'Islamophobie. This position, as Minister Hussain mentioned, is one that came about through the support and advocacy of Muslim communities and their allies to address a painful, even deadly reality of Islamophobia in this country. A, real, a reality that each and every one of us in this room and beyond are determined to change. Canada is proud of its Muslim communities, from the diverse shades of their skin to their diverse religious, ethnic, and cultural backgrounds, social identities, varied political views. Entrepreneurial, hardworking Canadian Muslims have contributed to this country for more than 100 years to all aspects of Canadian society and helped shape the future of this country in all 13 provinces and territories. Many Canadian Muslims and other ethnic and racialized individuals continue to face challenges in the ways in which society at large perceives them. All too often views that are simply based on not knowing Muslims and learning about them through limited portrayals in popular culture, online misinformation, and through sometimes narrow prisms of the daily news. Muslims are sometimes caught between being seen as a threat 
or as representing a problem to solve. It's our hope that we can use this moment to spur a national conversation about the value of Canadian diversity, including the richness of Canada's Muslim communities in our collective success as a nation. Throughout my career, I have worked both within and beyond our communities to encourage full participation in all aspects of civic life. Unfortunately, Islamophobia and other xenophobic behaviors, including anti-Semitism, anti-Black racism, anti-Indigenous hate, and anti-Asian racism, among others, continue to be present in Canadian society despite the ideals of multiculturalism that I and many others grew up believing in as we struggle to find our place in society and to show pride in who we are. It is my hope that I can act as a bridge builder and work with leaders to inspire all Canadians to better understand Muslim identities and cultures, countering both persistent racism and misrepresentation of Canadian Muslim identities and cultures is a vital part of building a more inclusive society. Now more than ever, we hope that all of our political leaders and elected officials will act and invest in strategies that promote an inclusive, integrated, and fully respectful society for all Canadians. If there's one thing that the COVID-19 pandemic has taught us, it is that we must work together for our shared well-being. Canadian Muslim doctors, nurses, frontline workers, like any other Canadians working in these professions, continue to save lives around the country, even when the pandemic itself has further exacerbated hate and discrimination faced by many racialized communities. I want to thank Canadian Muslims who continue to have faith to believe in our country and advocate for anti-racist policies and programs as we witness the rise in Muslim hate and discrimination in our schools, workplaces, and institutions. We must all work together to combat Islamophobia and build pathways for success for our youth and children but we can't do this work alone. I look forward to look, working with all levels of government, civil society, and all those with a determined vision of a Canada in which we stand up for each other. Throughout my work, I've heard from Canadian Muslims and particularly women and girls who are looking for representation in Canadian institutions and role models that can pave the way and support their needs. As someone who has personally faced gendered Islamophobia in various spaces over the years, I want to let those women and girls know, you belong here. Canada is firmly in your corner. Today, Canada chose to appoint a visibly Muslim woman who is committed to working with allies and communities across the nation to fight hate in all of its forms. We belong here, and we have been here all along. We know that Canada holds the promise of being a place where every single person in this country can live a life without fear, without discrimination, free from hate, free to contribute, while being true to who they are. It's a promise that I am determined to help fulfill in this new role. It's a promise that will take a lot of work to keep. It was just a few years ago in 2020 that we know Mohammed Azam Zafis lost his life to Islamophobia stabbed to death at the front doors of the very mosque we are in, as Minister Hussain reminded us. He was killed by an individual who sympathized with dangerous and extremist narratives that advanced a view of the world in which Muslims are enemies to be harmed or eliminated. A year later, <clears throat> the Afzal family was walking in their community when a young man similarly consumed with hatred of Muslims drove into them, killing four family members. Salman Afzal, Mediha Salman, Yumna, her, their daughter, Salman's mother, Talat, they were all killed. Only their, their nine-year-old son survived the attack, though he was seriously injured. As we all painfully know, these deaths were not the first deadly massacre to consume our communities with shock, heartache, and fear. Il y a six ans, les conséquences de la montée de l'islamophobie ont bouleversé un froid dimanche soir à Sainte-Foy, au Québec. Un tireur, un tireur solitaire rongé par la haine après avoir entendu pendant des années les soi-disant dangers que ses voisins musulmans représentaient pour lui, sa famille et sa communauté, a décidé de prendre les choses en main. 
Six years ago, the consequences of rising Islamophobia shattered a cold Sunday evening in St. Foy, Quebec, a lone gunman. Consumed with hatred after years of hearing about the so-called dangers that his Muslim neighbors posed to him, his family and his community decided to take matters into his own hands. Fueled by the hatred fomented in online spaces, angry that the government of Canada would extend welcome to those fleeing persecution, just as the United States then president was shutting its borders to Muslims, he decided to kill six men in cold blood. And he would have killed many others, including the children who accompanied their parents to evening prayers that night, had it not been for the brave efforts to stop him by several worshippers, several who lost their lives. At the end of his rampage, Ibrahim Aberi Mamadou, Mamadou Tanuberi, Khalil Bal Kachmi, Abu Bakr Thabti, Abdul Karim Hassan, and Azadine Sufyan had died. Nineteen other worshippers were injured, including Ayman Durbali, who was paralyzed in the attempt to stop the killer. We all have a role to play in ensuring that a brighter future than this awaits, not just for the children who lost their fathers that night, but for all children who deserve to grow up in a country that stands for inclusion, for unity, for love. Today, I am a proud Canadian Muslim mother, raising my children to believe in a Canada that continues to work for a better future for all. Today, I am proud to support the Canada Anti-Racism Action Plan, the National Action Plan on Combating Hate, and the federal government's myriad efforts to address discrimination in all its forms. I want to thank the Honourable Minister Ahmed Hussain his team, and the Government of Canada for making this position a reality as a way to foster greater diversity and inclusion in our beautiful country. I want to thank the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, for working every day to fight Islamophobia and ensure Canadian institutions from coast to coast to coast are inclusive of Canadian Muslims. Thank you so much for joining me today. I would like to pass the microphone to an incredible community champion that you all know so well, MP Ikra Khalid. Thank you. I'm back. That was a really, really heartfelt uh, speech, uh, Amira. I've known Amira for, uh, I think, about six years now. Uh, she was one of the, the rocks that I could count on when uh, motion 103 was going through the House of Commons. I remember very uh, a lot of late night phone calls um, bucking each other up and ensuring that we were doing the right thing by Muslim communities. And I am really hopeful that not just the Muslim community, but all communities will band together to support Amira as she endeavors into this very, very vital role within our Canadian space to ensure that we are progressing forward, not backward. Thank you, Amira, for taking this leadership role. And we are here, we're going to back you and, uh, and make sure that we are successful in, in what our objectives are here. Thank you. You know, when I first put my name forward uh, to become uh, a candidate for the Liberal Party, in my riding of Mississauga, Erin Mills, um, I leaned on one of my own mentors, uh, another uh, gentleman who has done phenomenal work, not just for the Muslim community, but for all communities in Canada. And I remember a very heartfelt conversation with him. I was about 28 years old at the time, and uh, we sat down and he said, Ikra, you are visible minority, you're a Muslim. That means that you are going to be under a lot more scrutiny than, than others. And from that time to now, he has been a steadfast mentor. He has been a friend and he has been one of the strongest advocates that I know within our community and for all Canadians. I am very, very proud to call up my friend Omar al Kabra, our Minister of Transportation, to come and say a few words. Thank you, Omar. Thank you very much. Uh Ikra, for um, all the work that you've done over the years and continue to do. Assalamu alaikum, everyone, good morning. It is a pleasure to be with all of you here today making such a historic announcement, Minister Hussain. Thank you for your leadership and for uh, your vision and for um, today announcing yet another step 
towards achieving and pursuing a society that is just and inclusive of everyone. Um, Amira, congratulations. Um, we could not have found a better candidate and a better individual to take on this important role. And let me say, this is a historic role. Not only is this position the first in Canada's history, but it is the first in the world. There is no government around the world that has recognized <laughs> recognized the necessity and the importance of building an inclusive society that also acknowledges the rise in Islamophobia. Six years ago, Ikra, when you put your motion 103, I never expected it to be controversial. What was so controversial about condemning a form of hate? Unfortunately, it turned into a political football. And to this day, we still have to deal with unfortunate political voices who are trying to make, uh, um, to gain some popularity by building up people's fear and ignorance. Our government is committed to combating all forms of hate. And Amira talked about some of the work, and Minister Hussein talked about some of the steps that our government has been taking. Today's announcement is yet another step towards achieving those ideals that all Canadians support. So let me just say that while we do recognize that there are a lot of alarming trends out there, but there are also a lot of promising and positive and optimistic signs that Canada, the idea of Canada, the idea of diverse, just, inclusive Canada lives amongst us every day. Kids in school live it every day. Professionals at work live it every day. Politicians in the House of Commons live it every day. And I'll give you one example. We have with us here uh, Member of Parliament Yara Sachs. Every year our Muslim and Jewish caucus meets over Christmas dinner. What country in the world you see Muslim and Jewish politicians meet to celebrate Christmas? There is no other country in the world that does this. Why? Because we are joined together in one common objective, is building a brighter future for everyone. And in closing, I just want to thank all of you here today. As Minister Hussein said, it was your advocacy, your encouragement, your criticism that keeps propelling us to do more. And we need to do more. So thank you for your vision, for your leadership, and I'm really uh, honored to be here on such a historic day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister al Kabra, and uh, rock on, my friend. We got this. Um, I want to just draw attention. I mean, we're all wearing these green squares. Uh, they represent the carpet at the, the mosque in Quebec uh, where they couldn't take the blood out of the carpet, and so they had to cut the squares. And we wear them to remember and to recognize what the real consequences of hate and Islamophobia mean to families, mean to each and every one of us and what we need to continue to do to make sure that there aren't more of those victims. As I've been on my journey, uh, and we as a government have been on this journey to ensure that we are combating Islamophobia effectively, one of my greatest uh, allies and, and friends uh, that have helped guide this conversation, that have been very, very strong in their advocacy uh, is a team that is small but mighty and is continuing to grow. The National Council of Canadian Muslims is uh, an organization that has brought community together, that has elevated the level of conversation around Islamophobia and around hate and discrimination and how we can take concrete steps uh, to really ensure that we're pushing that needle further towards progress. So at this time, 
I would like to invite uh, Stephen Brown, uh, from who is the CEO of the National Canadian Council of uh, Muslims, uh, to come and say a few words. But just as he's coming up, I just want to recognize, I think I saw Samir Zuberi uh, coming in from Montreal. Come up, Samir. Samir Zuberi is another great and strong voice in our caucus uh, on issues dealing with uh, Islamophobia. Thank you, Samir, for being here today. Come on up, Stephen, please. Good morning, everybody. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you all. My name is Stephen Brown, and I am the CEO of the National Council of Canadian Muslims. Permettez-moi de commencer par dire qu'aujourd'hui est une journée vraiment historique. Today is a historic day for the Muslim community of Canada, but also for Canada as a whole. Because for too long in years past, Canadians have seen a rise in Islamophobia. Canada, indeed, unfortunately, has become a leader in the G7 for Muslims killed in acts of Islamophobia. And as I walked into the IMO mosque this morning for the first announcement, past the very spot where Brother Muhammad Asim Zafis was killed by an alleged white supremacist, I could not help but think of time, history, of sadness, of sacrifice. To toutes les personnes qui ont travaillé darrache pied pour le changement et ce, Malgré la douleur. Not long after that incident, four members of the same Muslim family were cut down in an Islamophobic attack in London, Ontario. Et avant ces deux incidents, il y a eu l'attaque d'un mosquée de Québec où six fidèles ont été tués. Nous allons marquer le sixième anniversaire de cette attaque ce dimanche. After these attacks, our community sent a clear message that enough was enough and that we needed to see clear action from the government to tackle hate. Firstly, NCCM fought hard in the aftermath of the London attack to ensure the government of Canada invested and centralized time, energy, and resources into the battle against Islamophobia. Thus, we were delighted when Minister Hussein announced the Office of the Special Representative of Combating Islamophobia. It was a commitment to make history, and we thank both Minister Hussein and the Prime Minister for getting this done. And here we are. We want to congratulate Amira El Hawabi as the new special representative on Islamophobia on her new and well-deserved appointment. A well-known advocate for social justice, Amira has a storied career in civic engagement, journalism, civil liberties advocacy, anti-hate activism, among many other areas. We know that many of you know her from her incredible work she did at NCCM. While at NCCM, Amir was a passionate advocate, fighting so many critical battles for our community at a time when we needed a champion. At the CLC, and then at Canada Race Relations Foundation, Amir led important work to continue to stand for the disadvantage and to speak truth to power. Nous avons hâte de continuer de travailler avec elle, son bureau, et tous ceux qui veulent éliminer la menace de l'islamophobie dans notre pays. This turning point for our community is a tremendous moment. It is now imperative that we all help hold each other accountable in the pursuit of change. In its first year, we look forward to working with Special Representative al Rawabi so that the office tackles some urgent top priorities. First, a fulsome review of all departments that deal with national security in relation to Islamophobic past and present policies. Second, et ensuite, de contester les défaillances systémiques des politiques et des lois qui permettent ou encouragent la discrimination systémique contre les minorités dans toutes les régions du Canada, y compris ma province, le Québec, où l'utilisation de la clause non obstante à des fins politiques a effectivement transformé les, les minorités religieuses en citoyens de deuxième classe. And finally, to work to ensure that the Office of the Special Representative on Islamophobia stays representative of those who just want to live their lives in peace. Thank you for your time. Merci pour votre temps. And let us begin, commençons, for we have much work to do. Thank you very much, Stephen. Um, I, as I continue to take the mic and have to, to move the mic down, I'm constantly reminded of how tall uh, uh, people we're, we're among. Um, thank you very much, Stephen, for your advocacy. Uh, greatly appreciate it. The work that we do on a regular basis 
cannot happen without local community support. In fact, we are hosted here today by the IMO, uh, and I would be remiss if I did not call on Omar Farouk, our president for the International Muslim Organization of Toronto, to come and say a few words and to express uh, your feelings uh, on this historic day. Omar? Thank you, brother. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I begin in the name of God, the most merciful and most compassionate. And I greet you with the greetings of Islam, the greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakat. On behalf of the Board of Directors and our membership at the International Muslims Organization of Toronto, the IMO, I thank all of you for being here today for this historic announcement. We welcome the Honorable Minister of Housing, Diversity and Inclusion, Mr. Ahmed Hussein, the Honorable Ikra Khalid, our MC, and the Honorable Minister of Transportation, Mr. Omar al -Gabra. And of course, um, the President of the NCCM, Stephen Brown, and our respected Imams and community leaders. Thank you all for taking the time to be with us this morning. From its inceptions, nearly 30 years ago, the IMO took its guiding principles from the words of the great Sufi mystic, Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi, and I quote, come again, please come again. Whoever you are, worshiper, heretic, lunatic, even if you promise a hundred times, and a hundred times you broke your promise, this court of ours is not one of despair. Come, come again, unquote. The tragic event that unfolded on our doorsteps on that chilly September night three years ago momentarily shattered our vision. The life of our brother Mohammed Zafis was snuffed out in a cruel and cowardly act of hate. But as we mourn and as we grieve, not surprising in the least, many, many wonderful city, uh, citizens of our country, of this city and our province, men and women from, from diversified faith and civic communities, People from all walks of life came out and stood with us, sending a message to all those who traffic in hateful ideology that the light of goodness, decency, and kindness shall never be extinguished. In appointing a special representative, Sister Amira, on combating Islamophobia, our government is fulfilling a promise it made, and we see this as a positive sign that our collective will in repelling hate is on the right track. Thank you, and may God Almighty bless all of you and make form our commitment to truth. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brother Omar Farouk. Uh, we really appreciate your remarks and you opening your doors uh, for us here today. Um, now, this concludes the speaking uh, portion of this event. Um, what we'll now do is open the question and answer session with members of the media. The question and answer session will be moderated by Brittany from Minister Hussein's office. And each member of the media uh, has the opportunity to ask one question and one follow-up question. Um, as you are asking your question, please state your name and organization prior to asking your question. I will ask all members of parliament and Amira to join us on stage uh, for this portion as well. Thank you.
Thank you, MP Khaled. As she has said, everyone, please come to the mic. Uh, you will have an opportunity for one question, one follow-up. We'll be about 10 minutes for the media Q&A. Please state your name and your outlet, whoever would like to get us started. Good morning. My name is Radhika Sharma, and I'm from Omni Television. My question is for Amira. Amira, can you please tell us what would be your responsibilities in your new role? Good morning, thank you so much for the question. So my responsibility is to consult, to speak with uh, Canadian Muslim communities, to understand the challenges, barriers, systemic uh, discrimination that they're facing on a day-to-day -day basis and provide advice to Minister Hussain and the Government of Canada on how best to address these systemic barriers and these forms of discrimination that they are encountering in their day-to-day -day lives. And if people from community want to reach out to you and let's say they want to share what they have been going through, what are the options you are going to provide them? That how can they reach you and tell you if they have combated any incident of Islamophobia? Yeah, so once the office is set up in a few weeks, uh, there will be a myriad of ways for community members to reach the office and to provide input. Um, and I will also be doing much outreach, meeting with communities across Canada to hear directly from them and to help inform the government on, best, on how best to move forward to combat Islamophobia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great, we can take the next question. Uh, Rob Kravavik, CBC. Uh, Amir, uh, congratulations is probably not the right thing, but uh, we wish you luck. Uh, how would we measure the success of your new position and what are, I guess you've answered first steps, but what would be first steps? Um, I'm looking forward to our communities um, keeping me accountable. I'm going to be listening to their needs. Um, this is something I've done throughout over two decades of working on issues of Islamophobia and racial discrimination. Um, I am here to serve our communities. I'm here to serve the federal government in providing the best advice possible based on the research, based on the data that we gather, based on what we hear from everyday Canadian Muslims. And so the success really will be uh, what we hear from communities themselves on how they feel the office is doing. Thank you. I uh, also have questions for the, uh, the other ministers. Um, Mr. Hussein? Uh, actually, let me do my framing up here. <laughs> uh, in regards to Quebec's uh, Bill 21, uh, do you see this office playing a role in challenging Quebec's Bill 21 given Muslim women who wear hijabs are disallowed from working in the public sector? So uh, I'll start by saying that uh, Ms. El Gawabi's role will be as an advisor, a champion, a representative, an expert, uh, helping us as a government to uh, bring forth recommendations to further entrench our work uh, in fighting Islamophobia. We will of course be uh, working very closely with her to make sure that, uh, that the fight against Islamophobia is informed through her office, through the community. Uh, with respect to Bill 21, this is a matter that is fundamental. It is an issue that touches on our Charter of Rights and Freedoms. It is uh, you know, an issue that touches on freedom of religion. And we've said it very clearly that this is a serious concern for us. We will uh, remain steadfast in our, uh, in our efforts to protect uh, the rights of all Canadians, uh, particularly on, on the issue of freedom of religion. Uh, you know, we expect this matter to, to be appealed uh, to, to, to the Supreme Court of Canada. When that happens, you can expect that we will be part of that uh, debate and we will take a position uh, and, and, and make sure that we're part of that, uh, that process. Uh, thank you. Uh, Minister uh, Algebra, on a, on a different topic. Do you need to change your frame? Uh, regarding the, uh, what happened on the uh, Via train over the holidays, um, you've uh, stated that what happened on the Via rail over the holidays was unacceptable and the government is reviewing what happened. 
Uh, what has that review uncovered so far, and what concrete changes are you committing to? Let me first repeat what I said before, uh, that ordeal that passengers felt and had to deal with on that particular day, waiting, passengers waiting for 19 hours on board a train without adequate information or supplies was unacceptable. And I've shared that point of view with VIA and the CEO of VIA. VIA is currently, uh, has retained a third party to conduct uh, a thorough uh, independent review of what had happened. Uh, I don't think that review is completed yet. I'm looking forward to receiving the input the report uh, and the findings, but also to ensure that VIA acts upon those findings to make sure that these type of things never happen again. And I know that uh, executives from VIA uh, uh, will be appearing before committee today, so I'm looking forward to hearing uh, uh, the exchange between members of parliaments and uh, VIA and the questions and the answers. Thank you, Minister. We'll move on to the next question. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Sharif Hassan from the Canadian Press. Uh, I have one question for Mr. Minister Hussain and one for Amira. My uh, question for uh, Mr. Hussain is about, well, when we talk about uh, Islamophobia, when we talk about anti-black racism, when we talk about gender discrimination, a specific group of people comes to mind, and that's the black Muslim women who are wearing hijab. They have been in the past targeted uh, because of their race, because of their religious identity, and because they're women. I've spoken with, to, with, with some women, with some Muslim black women who are wearing hijab, and they're really worried. So my question from you is that, is it a big concern for you? Uh, and if yes, have you been working on any solutions to provide some sort of protection for this specific group of people? Absolutely. Uh, I, I want to reiterate uh, the fact that you know, these rise uh, in, in a number of incidents which have actually targeted uh, specifically black Muslim women uh, are, are completely unacceptable. We, we have been aware of those incidents. We are very concerned by them. Uh, the fact of the matter is no one should be targeted uh, for who they are and, and, and who they worship. And I believe very strongly uh, in consultation with the community that today's announcement of Amira El Gawabi and this particular role uh, as special representative to combat Islamophobia with the support, uh, the capacity, the staff and the, and the budget necessary. We've allocated $5.6 million as part of Budget 2022 to support this office with staff and the capacity so that uh, the special representative to combat Islamophobia can do their work. And the, what Amira will bring to the table is uh, the intersectionality of the fight against all forms of hate, including Islamophobia. Uh, we've taken a number of actions, uh, we, you know you know the work we've done with respect to the uh, Security Infrastructure Fund, which is about uh, the federal government funding uh, security upgrades and infrastructure supports to, uh, to make community centers and places of worship, including masjids, safer for community members. That work continues. I'm responsible for a very important uh, anti-racism initiative, which funds uh, those who are doing the heavy lifting on the ground to fight Islamophobia, to fight hate in all its forms, to fight anti-black racism. And that work continues. We're funding, uh, you know, Budget 2022 dedicated more resources and investment to that fight. And we'll continue to make sure that we, we re-examine uh, our structures in the criminal justice system to support victims more, to make sure that we combat online hate, uh, so this is a multifaceted fight, but make no mistake, today's announcement of a special representative to combat Islamophobia is advancing that work. It's another step in the right direction to, to really make sure that we're building a more inclusive uh, country that, uh, that, that, that makes everyone feel that they belong. Uh, I've, I've said this before so many times that Canada, the fact that Canada is diverse is a fact. Diversity is a fact in Canada, but inclusion is a choice. And as, a, as the federal government, we've made the choice to fight every single day for, for an inclusive Canada that is free from hate, free from Islamophobia. Thank you. Uh, Amira, my question uh, for you is that, um, do you, uh, what, what, sorry, 
what your priorities would be? Do you think that you need to pay, to pay special attention to work with Muslim black women who are wearing hijab because they, as I said, they are basically, some people are worried that these people bear the brand of Islamophobia. The role of the special representative uh, to combat Islamophobia is to fully represent our communities in all of it, their various diversities, including black Muslim women and black Muslims. This is a really important aspect of this work, absolutely. The women who have been suffering hate uh, primarily um, over the years in Edmonton, we have several very horrific incidents that occurred there. Um, if you read some of the cases, you know, women and you know, one woman was sitting in a car with her daughter and a, and a perpetrator came, dragged her out, beat her on the ground, um, you know, chased away her daughter. I mean, horrific. And thankfully, the, the perpetrator in that incident, you know, was charged and was sentenced just this past fall. And that's extremely important to see that acts of hate um, face consequences through our justice system. And so absolutely, I understand the very real fears that black Muslim women are experiencing, that that sadly many visible Muslim people, and in particular women wearing the headscarf like myself, have to face every day. We should not be afraid to go for a walk with our children, to play at the playground with them. We should not be worried about stepping onto public transit. We should not be afraid that someone is going to start yelling at us or, or you know, throwing something or even physically assaulting us. These are not fears that we should have in Canada, and I am determined to work with communities to find solutions, to listen to community advocates and leaders who are working on this and have been working on this, to ensure that every single person feels safe, regardless of their identities. And absolutely what Minister Sain said is absolutely true. Diverse, diversity is indeed a fact. Inclusion is a choice that we're all committed to ensuring that everyone is able to participate fully. Thank you. Thank you. Final question from Omni for Mr. Ogara. Good morning, Minister. I would request you to share your thoughts in Arabic, if you please can. So, how do you we'll, and... We'll do it maybe on, on the side there, so I'll come and talk to you later. Sure, sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Thank you, everyone. That concludes the media Q&A. Um, all of the speakers and members of Parliament, can you stay at the front for a group photo?